Hi, I'm John Karanikas and I'm the Shell Chief Scientist for Reservoir Engineering. Very promising, very big and very tantalizing sources of oil and gas are stored in unusual rock formations. Bringing the so-called unconventional resources to the surface would require new and innovative technologies. We're talking about huge volumes of hydrocarbons here. For example, the old sands of Alberta hold over about 100 billion barrels of oil. The oil shale in the U.S. could account for potentially over 800 billion barrels of oil. And the shale gas in the U.S. could fuel U.S. consumption for decades. Equally, in other parts of the world, there are promising unconventional gas projects. For instance, in China, we developed together with our partner PetroChina the major Chang Bay gas field. The challenges in dealing with unconventional resources are plentiful. They are either contained in rocks with very small pores that cause high resistance to flow, or in the case of oil, it is just too thick to flow. And sometimes the soil and gas reservoirs are full of fractures or little fissures which change as temperature and pressure vary. For a reservoir engineer like myself, the one specific challenge is to use mathematical models to accurately capture the change in behavior of rocks and fluids and predict what happens when the temperature and pressures underground vary. Having a deep and broad understanding of the science of physics, the chemistry of rocks, and how the liquids and gas flow is prerequisite. We use mathematical models because it is very expensive to test new production methods in the real rock formations. Instead, we collect small sections of rock that contain the hydrocarbons and analyze their behavior in the laboratory where testing is comparatively inexpensive. Finally, we apply these models to design and operate field tests in the real world. For example, in the production of unconventional oil, we often inject steam to make the, flow, the oil flow more easily. In the hot region of the reservoir, where we inject steam, oil and water may turn into a mixture of vapors. On its way to the cooler production zone, the vapor mix turns back into liquids of somewhat different composition that flows more easily. As you can imagine, it isn't an easy exercise predicting all these changes, but that is exactly our job. Oil shale reservoirs pose a different set of challenges to the engineers, and producing the hydrocarbons that are stored essentially in a solid form in the rock requires a different technique than traditional steam injection. We are developing a new thermal recovery technology based on injecting pure heat using long heaters stuck in the formation. Now, what makes the job truly innovative is a strong impact of chemistry on the models. We sometimes call that a refinery in the subsurface. Our department recently started working on unconventional gas technologies too. Unconventional gas is tightly locked in rocks with often hair-thin pores. Typically, developing these resources requires a huge number of wells to be drilled, and the rock needs to be fractured to increase the gas flow. The overall challenge here is to reduce the number of wells to bring down the cost and reduce the footprint. Equally, we seek to minimize the energy and the water consumption of the fracturing process. Again, enhanced models of what is happening in the subsurface are critical enablers towards these objectives. As a chief scientist, part of my job is to help stimulate innovation here at Shell and keep us at the forefront of technology development. Technology is critical to help all forms of energy flowing. Part of my initial attraction in coming to work in the energy industry was that my research would have an impact. I came to Shell because it has that extra edge versus many other companies in being a truly global player in energy technology. Shell offers unparalleled opportunities for those who like to develop technologies fueling progress in the world. 